This is the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro, and it's one of the most unusual looking shoes I've ever come across. It's beautiful and bizarre. But the question is, is it any good? Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Kofuzi and I'm a non-elite runner who reviews shoes here on YouTube. And today I wanna to talk to you guys about the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro. And before I give my thoughts on this very unique shoe, I do wanna go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that Mizuno sent to me for the purpose of a review, so I did not have to pay for them myself. However, nobody's paying me to make this video or to use the shoe, and no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro. First thing that I think we gotta talk about is the shape of this shoe. This is what Mizuno is calling its smooth speed assist. They've taken a giant chunk out of the back of the heel. And I think the main thing that that does is that may help this shoe skirt some of the world athletics rules in terms of what are eligible shoes that you can run a road marathon in. The upper limit for that is 40 millimeters of stack height in the heel. And here we have a reported 39 millimeters of stack height from exactly where it is measured and there are specific rules in terms of where the shoe has to be measured so they can't just cherry pick any point of the shoe for that rear stack height they have to pick a very specific point that's prescribed by the rules and where that is it's 39 millimeters of stack height but the shoe has a four millimeter drop so there's 35 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot and in this forefoot there is Mizuno's energy light foam which Mizuno says provides a soft cushion and a high amount of energy return. Also in this shoe, there is a wave plate, but this is a very special wave plate from Mizuno. It's their first carbon fiber reinforced wave plate. So I think it's a little bit different than a carbon plate that you might find in some other shoes, but it's gonna serve a lot of the same functions where it is going to help keep the shoe and all this super foam nice and stable through the landing and toe off, but also provide a little bit of snappiness as you're going through that foot strike. They're also balancing this with two Two different densities of NRZ light foam so that way you can still maintain those kind of two opposite ends of like the midsole foam spectrum there's squishiness and then there's kind of springiness and so with the two different densities you're getting a little bit of both ends of the spectrum best of both worlds as we would all come to expect from a marathon super shoe. Now on the outsole, we have a really fantastic design here, a minimal amount of rubber coverage on the outsole that still provides plenty of grip and confidence. And that's what Mizuno is calling their G3 outsole. It's basically just kind of like a lattice of rubber that's placed on just the contact points or potential contact points of this shoe with the ground to protect all that midsole foam while also keeping it really lightweight. And while you're down here looking at the outsole, you could take a peek at the beautiful design that they've carved into this midsole itself. I think part of it will be a little bit functional in terms of this cutout here, making it so that the shoe is a little bit easier to bend and load that carbon reinforced wave plate. And I also think it's gonna shave off a little bit of weight because you're taking out a substantial amount of foam in here. And also I just think it's very aesthetically pleasing. I love the way it looks. Now moving to the upper of the shoe, the aesthetics continue. This is the Kakizome version of the upper which my understanding the translation of that is it's supposed to be Japanese calligraphy that's usually reserved for the first of the year it's supposed to be particularly auspicious for you to have as a design and I think it's absolutely beautiful but the beauty of the shoe is not just superficial the materials that they're using up here as well are really nice it's an engineered mesh with very little padding and very little structural support which I think is really nice uh, there's plenty of breathability there's a lot of mesh holes in this shoe there's a little bit of structure on this outer edge of the toe box but not a lot that's in there uh, the tongue is absolutely flat it's not gusseted but there are little lace loops at the top to keep the tongue from sliding around too much from side to side but it's kind of paper thin just the way I like the tongues on shoes 
And while there is a little bit of structure here in terms of kind of this way bending this uh, heel cup, otherwise it's a very floppy shoe back here in the heel. And I find that to be really comfortable as well for all of my shoes, but especially for my racing shoes. And now altogether, this shoe comes in a weight that may tip the scales a little bit on the heavy side, but given just how much shoe you have here, I feel like it's a respectable race weight of 7.7 .7 ounces or 218 grams. All right, with those specs taken care of, let's talk about what it was like to actually get out there and run some faster miles in this shoe. Now, the question I started out this video with is, is this shoe any good? And the answer to that is a resounding yes. Absolutely, this shoe is really fun. It's easily the best Mizuno shoe that I've ever run in. And my first marathon that I ever ran back in 2010 was in a Mizuno shoe. So I've got a long history with this brand. I will say that it wasn't quite as squishy as I'd been kind of hearing this shoe being reported to being, but I also felt like it was a really great shoe that felt like a super shoe, a shoe that I felt like I could take on the marathon distance. Now, going back to that spectrum that I talked about of squishiness and springiness, I feel like this shoe kind of airs on the side a little bit on that springy side, a little bit more firm, a little bit more responsive. There is that squishiness that's there, but I didn't really start to get it until I at least got up to marathon pace and faster Then I felt like I was loading the shoe correctly to be able to get some of that squishiness squishiness that was in the shoe. At easier paces, I'm not hitting the ground quite as hard. I'm not pushing off quite as hard. So I felt like I was kind of like still sitting on top of the foams. But once I got up to speed, once I got up to those work efforts, that's when I really felt like the shoe and I started to get along really nice and well. And ultimately, the shoe that I think this reminds me the most of is going to be the Endorphin Pro 2. And this is the second time in like the last month that I've kind of referenced that shoe. That was a shoe that I felt like was really exciting to run in. I raced half marathons in it and loved it, but I thought it was too firm for taking the full marathon distance. Now we've got two densities of a very similar feeling foam in the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro, and we've got a little bit more stack height. So I feel like we've taken that Endorphin Pro 2, taken that same feeling, and I've extrapolated it out to a sensation that I can actually run the marathon distance in this shoe, and I find it to be a very exciting shoe to be able to run in. But that's not to say it's gonna be for everyone. One of the things that this shoe definitely makes you do is think a little bit more about your stride, especially when you're getting tired. Now, one of the things that I tend to do as I'm getting tired at a longer marathon type of effort uh, is that I tend to overstride a little bit and I'm doing a little bit of kind of almost like heel breaking as I'm coming in. And you definitely feel that and you get penalized when you run in the shoe. It kind of like makes your tired strides feel even less strong. So like it lets you know when you're messing up. And so you got to pay a little bit more attention to how you're running. It takes, I think, a little bit more experience to be able to run well in the shoe. And it reminds you to stay up on your toes. And you got to be strong enough to be able to do that for the entire marathon distance. Not necessarily on your toes, on your toes, but hitting that midfoot and rolling through onto the forefoot and getting up there and getting off of that heel. I feel like that's where this shoe shines. And for me, that's where the shoe rewarded me the most. So when I was hitting the ground cleanly and rolling through in the way that this shoe was designed, and in a way that really works well with my foot strike, I felt like I got like a very positive reinforcement. And then when I got a little bit sloppy, then I got a lot of negative reinforcement really quickly. So I really like to see that kind of feature in a shoe. So all of my favorite shoes tend to do that and have that kind of like quirk, if you want to even call it that. But I know that there are other marathon shoes out there that are a lot more forgiving and will still give you that nice roll through, even though you might be getting a little bit sloppy. I do think that that kind of like trades a lot of comfort for speed, but I feel like that's also going to be preference in terms of how people want to get through their races and race that 26.2. So I'm not going to say that one's better or worse than the other, but I will say that this is a little bit more tricky of a shoe and probably not the best kind of like first carbon shoe I've ever bought type of shoe if you want to look at it that way. I'm not trying to scare anyone, anyone away from it. I'm not trying to say you can't run in this unless you run a certain pace or that you can't run in it unless you run a certain number of marathons. I'm just saying that for me, it's a little bit trickier to run in, but that extra effort that you can put into it, making sure that you're getting it right, your efforts are certainly rewarded. So I've been rambling on long enough, so let's try and summarize with some bullet points. I think that the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro is best for half marathon and marathon training and racing. It is certainly, in my mind, a marathon super shoe. Now, in terms of some options that you can pair this shoe with, I'm going to assume that if you are trying to build a rotation around this shoe, 
then I think that your preferences probably lean a little bit more towards the firm or responsive. And so I think that the daily trainer and sometimes workout shoe that you can reach for would be the Hyperion Max. Now this is a nitro based foam that I think is on a little bit on the firm side, but also once you're really laying into the shoe, you're picking up the pace a little bit, that's where this foam really loosens up. And also this year with the Max version of this Hyperion, I think that you can also use it for a lot of your daily training miles as well. Now, if you need something that's gonna be a lot more relaxed, maybe you're just going on a longer easy run and you do really want to work with the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro, I think another shoe that you could pair with for those easier days, maybe some recovery runs, would be the Solomon Aeroglide. Now this is a shoe that's in that max cushion category, but again, it's a little bit on the firmer side for how I like my max cushion shoes. So I feel like if you like the Wave Rebellion Pro or vice versa, if you like the Aeroglide, then I think that a racing shoe that might work out really well for you is gonna be that Wave Rebellion Pro. So I feel like those three shoes all put together could make for a nice little mini rotation. Now let's talk about the buying guide for this shoe. Uh, it's brand new, it's just come out, so you're not gonna really be able to find it on sale anywhere. The purchase price in the US is $250, and I feel like that is a good price for what you are getting. I'm not saying it's a small amount of money by any means, $250 is a lot of money for a race shoe, but that's pretty much what race shoes cost these days. So some comparison points that I think we can use if you're considering this shoe and you wanna look at some other shoes that are in kind of a similar caliber. One shoe has been one of my favorite shoes that I've been running in lately is the Endorphin Elite. I feel like there's a lot of similarities in the geometries of these two shoes up in the forefoot. There is an aggressive kind of rocker shape to it. And I feel like both of these shoes are a lot of fun to be able to run in. The Endorphin Elite is a lot lighter and I feel like a lot softer than the Wave Rebellion Pro. So that might be the deciding factor between these two shoes for you. Also, this is $25 more expensive so quite a bit of a price bump to get to that Endorphin Elite. The other shoe that I think you should consider if you're looking at the Wave Rebellion Pro is the Metaspeed Sky Plus. This is a nylon based super shoe and I think that there is a similar level of slight stiffness to it that I wish were just a touch softer for my personal preference but I've been able to race in this shoe really well. I have my PR in this shoe. And also I get that same kind of like, you really have to be careful how you're running in it, especially later in the race. When you're running well, when your mechanics are good, the shoe rewards you. When you're not running so well and you're leaning back a little bit too much, or maybe you're overstriding, the shoe will definitely let you know and penalize you as well. So I feel like these are two shoes that kind of have a lot of similar mechanics that one definitely reminds me of the other. This shoe is also $250, so you're looking at the same price for each of those two shoes. So those are my thoughts on the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro. If you have any other questions about this shoe or any of the shoes that I talked about, feel free to put them in the comments down below or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. It is on another channel, the Kofa Z Run Club channel. There's a link to it in the description down below to make it easier for you guys to find it. Hopefully I'll see you there in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?